AC Butch, aka Brooklyn Butch, coming to you from my oceanfront condo on the boardwalk in Atlantic City. Oh yeah, I'm a professional gambler, blackjack, baccarat, craps, you name it, I do it. But it wasn't always that way, no, no, no. Many years ago, in the 60s, Brooklyn, New York, street kid Butch, oh yeah, got into action bowling. I've been asked many times, what is Action Bowl? What's it all about? Well, first of all, let me tell you something. It is filled with some of the greatest characters ever. Guys like Rags, Lemon, The Ox, Fats and Deacon, Beeper, The Horn, Bernie Bananas, The Whale, Snake, Rudy Revs, Buffalo, The Cane, Berkey Baby, Doug the Rug, and it goes on and on and on, and I loved it. First, let me get something straight. I love team sports. I love basketball and football and baseball. As a matter of fact, as a, as a young guy, I was a really very good at baseball, good enough to possibly turn pro. I mean, I was a power hitter. I was fast, golden glove in the outfield and first base. And uh, it all ended though. It all ended when I started bowling. Uh, I, I, just, I just didn't have my head any other place. I loved going heads up, like boxing, wrestling, MMA, tennis, that's what I love. The excitement of me against you, in your face, Brooklyn style, street style. What turns me on the most about action ball was the alleys themselves, back in the 60s, smoke filled, 1 a.m. in the morning, gangsters, Shylocks, bookies, accountants, street people, you name it, everybody there for one reason, to watch and bet on some of the greatest bowlers in the world going head to head, mano to mano, uno, uno. And I tell you, it was like gladiators in the Coliseum. You couldn't match it. I loved it. Getting up on those alleys, collecting the money from the back end, standing there in the tenth frame. The excitement of needing the strike to win, that's when my life really began. I knew I would throw it. I had no doubts about it. I could visualize the ball going down the alley, crashing into the pins, all ten into the back pit, turning around, everybody high-fiving. Let me tell you, the greatest high in the world. I wouldn't give up those days for anything. That was living. And let's go out to Brooklyn Butch. Yes. Makes me want to grab a ball and go out and get a match right now. Hello, guys. How you doing? Hey, Good, absolutely you doing? tremendous. Great piece of work there. We can't <laughs> claim credit for it. That is actually yours. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It, it's, it's a life I love. There's nothing like it. And, uh, and let me tell you something. There's so many guys out there, great action bowlers, many of them. Many of the great action bowlers are now... PBA Hall of Famers, and it's like being out in the desert. The sun just coming down on your head, and you're looking for something, and there's nothing out there. All of a sudden, you find a watering hole. It's like action heaven. That's what our Facebook group is. It's it's a collection of people being able to come there, the legends, the true legends of the game, being able to tell their stories, talk back and forth to each other, and it's one of a kind, the only kind in the world. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned a lot of names, mostly from the Brooklyn area. And when we had Steve Rudolph on a couple of weeks ago, we are talking is just about every place in the country had their little pocket of hustlers, action bowlers. I mean, I can run off a half a dozen names from New England that no one ever heard of. But within that mix of Ronnie Hatem, Roger Urban, Tony Mazzola, uh, names like that, that I don't, who are they? But they were great Great action players. Oh, absolutely. I mean, uh, I mean, throughout the country, through different areas, whether 30s, 40s, 50s, Chicago, St. Louis, Milwaukee, Texas was loaded with a, mm -hmm. a lot of big action bowlers. The one thing about New York is, though, we had more of it. I mean, yeah. we didn't really get hit big with it until the 60s. That, to me, is uh, the golden era of action bowling. But the amount of action bone we had was just off the wall ridiculous. I mean, I'm talking about uh, in Brooklyn alone, and that's where I'm from, so that's why I talk mostly about it. Uh, we had at least 15 different alleys that had a lot of action in it, you know, throughout different periods of time. Uh, of course, Central Lanes uh, was the biggest of all. Uh, 
and uh, that wasn't in Brooklyn, but uh, but it just goes on and on and on. It was such a fantastic life, something that we'll never have again. Now, was Central and Yonkers right down from the raceway? Yeah, right. Well, well it was a little further up, but uh, not far from Yonkers, right? Yeah, because we heard about that, that you could be there at midnight on Saturday, and you can get any action you want. We got there about 11 o'clock, and like, it's desolate. Oh, oh absolutely. But you walked we went in out there to on eat. Saturday night, and that's the night they had it. I mean, Evan and Wem in Brooklyn in, in its heyday, we had big, big-time action there literally five to six nights a week for a couple of years run, which is unbelievable. Sometimes uh, we had all 28 lanes going. It wasn't a big house like Central Lane. Central had, I think it was 48 or 52 or whatever it might be. But for Saturday night for that one-shot deal, there was nothing like Central Lanes. I mean, I'm talking about you going there, the biggest of the bigs. You had Richie Horn right and Lemon and, and uh, Ralph and, and and Ernie. Every big name and pros. Any pro could walk in there. They'd get action. And most of the time, they'd get beat. It was that simple. Yeah, and it wasn't that you had to be one of those big names. You could go down another pair of lanes, and some of the 150 average is trying to hustle up another 150 bowler. Oh, absolutely. I mean, I, I mean, that was the beauty of action bowl, and of course, we tend to talk about the top end of it, but there was much more action as far as volume goes with guys that averaged, okay, I won't say 150, but guys that average uh, 180, 190, a tremendous amount of action. Uh, I myself uh, bowled uh, right below the top tier. I never wanted to be in the top tier, and it's simple. You can't make money there. I couldn't. I, I mean, I was good certain nights. I could have bowled up there with some of the best, maybe, but make money never happened. But where I laid right be, right below that tier, I never had a losing year. I, I, I mean, this is in the 60s. I was a solid 205 to 210 action bowler, and uh, I made a lot of money. But never knocked heads with the big names because once you do, you get the rep and you can't get the regular matches anymore. Whether you win or lose with them, the second you're bowling with them more than once on a constant basis, it's all over. You can't get the easier matches anymore. But when I say easy, these guys weren't easy. I mean, these were legitimate 190, 200 action bowlers in the 60s. Don't forget, this isn't now. In the 60s, 200, 205 was decent. Okay, the greats still were able to go out there on any given night and shoot the 220s, 230s, 240s, and sometimes even more. I mean, guys like Bob Perry and stuff like that, unbelievable. The scores that this man could shoot were just off the wall unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, I was going to bring up that same point because back then, a 180, 190 bowler was only a mark away from the top bowler. Now, 180, 190, you're half a game away from a top bowler. Oh, well, it, it, it's, it's no comparison. Uh, I enjoyed bowling back then. I, enjoy, I enjoyed the harder conditions when you really had to be good at what you were doing. Uh, to make that ball hook, you really knew how to, uh, you had to know how to do it. It just didn't come natural because of the way the ball was manufactured, because of uh, the alley conditions or anything like that. A whole completely different ball game. I love the 60s. And as far as pure volume goes, the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, there was a lot of action bowling. Don't come near the volume of action from the 60s. It was just off the wall. It was unbelievable. Yeah, and... Uh in your, the video, we only got to hear the audio on the radio, but right. you had the full-on shot of Maple Lanes. And right. last last uh, Wednesday morning, I met with John Laspina. And oh, really? We, yeah. Well, <laughs> he just you, bought countryside man, lanes down really here. In, really in the bowling scene. I mean, the amount of lanes that he's owned throughout Brooklyn and elsewhere. <laughs> yeah, and he was, and he, he hated the hustling because he had to keep replacing the carpet every year because you guys... <laughs> Always would just put your cigarettes right out on this carpet. As a not yeah, the bowlers, yeah, yeah. those yeah, well, were the, the other guys. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but but Maple Maple, one of his first main places, they had they had a food counter there that was unbelievable. I mean you, I, I mean when it came to their type of food, breakfast food, burgers, so on and so forth, you couldn't get better in the best restaurants. They were off the wall completely when it came to food, and I love food. <laughs> Sounds like it. Uh, on Facebook, how can people? Uh, what can people look forward to by going on your Facebook page? 
Oh, okay. Well, the easiest way to get there, I mean, I'll give you both URLs, but my original uh, uh, site is actionbowlers.com, a regular website, which is uh, one of a kind, the only one of its, uh, of what it is in the whole world also. That's, that's what started it all. Uh, so if, you, if anybody goes to actionbowlers.com, uh, right on the front page is uh, the complete link to the Facebook. If you want to go directly to the Facebook group page, it's facebook.com slash groups, G-R-O-U-P-S, slash Action Bowlers. But the easiest way to remember it is just go to actionbowlers.com and click on the front page, and you'll be right there. And once you're there, I mean, you have the biggest and the best Action Bowlers from all time, members there, active, PBA Hall of Famers, uh, I, I mean, the biggest of the big names right there. You, you can interact with them. You can hear their stories. It's just a phenomenal thing. It's 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 uh, it's just unreal, completely. And yeah. these guys have a place to go. This is their home now. <laughs> yeah, and for those that maybe have trouble remember, remembering things, if you're on Facebook, you can just type in Brooklyn Butch. That'll bring you there. And I'm sure if you Google it, it'll bring you there yeah, somehow. Yeah, well, Brooklyn Butch or Action Bowlers, yeah. right? Action Bowlers, because that's the actual group name is Action Bowlers. Uh, uh I started it, but the group name is Action Bowlers. So we finally got you, and I guess you've posted the August 21st, which was our action show up on the website. So um, Right, uh, absolutely. That was a great show. Uh, all the guys did fantastic, and, uh, and uh, it's up there now forever. <laughs> yeah, as a matter of fact, I heard back from Steve Rudolph a couple of days ago. He was trying to coach his nephew. And this lady coach came up to him and said, you can't, you can't do that. You're not a certified coach. I mean, here's a guy <laughs> with, like, PBA member, 4,300s, 10,800s, but he's not good enough to coach his nephew. And as, as I <laughs> answered back to him, because he was asking, well, what's this certification stuff? And right, I said, well, yeah. you know, if John Jowdy, Don Johnson, uh, Tom Chorus, if they were certified, they could have been really good coaches. Dick That's Ritker. right. That's right. Dick Ritker well, I'll tell you, Steve one. really impressed me that day. Now, uh, he does a lot of posting. He's very active, but uh, I never spoke to him or actually heard his voice or heard him tell a story. And uh, he was like a pro up there. Uh, when he was on your show, he was fantastic as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I heard back from Larry Dwoskins afterwards. I guess he just had some surgery, and uh, I right. guess it's not going well. And he said, this might be kind of my last posting on the internet because I can't see that well anymore. So you're talking about Lenny Dwoskin. Lenny, yeah. Lenny the Cane Dwoskin, my original. Well, he wasn't an actual partner in Action Bowlers, but uh, uh, when I started the site well over ten years ago, back in the late '90s, he was such a gigantic part of it. Uh, he's from Brooklyn. I know him well because uh, I hung out with him at Avenue M. Of course, there was many years in between. We had nothing to do with each other. But when he came on to Action Bowlers, the website, his story is just, just unbelievable. He contributed so much to that site to make it the gigantic success that it became. Lenny, Lenny is a class guy. Well, Brooklyn Butch, we appreciate you coming on. We're going to have to have you on again because a lot more great stories I'm sure we can hear. The yeah, city is a yeah, million the, stories. Yeah, so many some. stories. They're actually in the thousands. It's not that I know everyone by heart, but <laughs> but uh, but it just doesn't end. Okay, hold on, Brooklyn Butch. We'll be right back. You got it. All right, take care now. <laughs> <laughs> 